Hi, today we are going to discuss the low level design of a parking lot. Uh, basically, we will be concentrating on two things. First, this video is specifically targeted towards how will you clear the low level design interview round if you get this question. We will only see the important features or the necessary features which an interviewer will discuss with you in a low level design interview. We are not going for the comprehensive design or low level design of a parking lot, which can be a very large system with tens of functionalities and hundreds of classes. The second part, most of the times in a low level design interview, it's not about your knowledge. It's about how you present that knowledge. And many candidates fail to do that because there are a lot of things to cover. And there are things, basically I want you to, I want you not to get in a situation or avoid being in a situation such that 40 minutes into the interview, you have written all your data structures and all your classes and all your functionalities. You are explaining one important thing and the interviewer says, okay, uh, so basically uh, you are using uh, uh, assigning the first available parking spot to the vehicle. But what I want is what you to implement multiple parking strategies. So what you were doing, it's slightly different from what the interviewer wanted. And now you have hardly 10 minutes left into the interview and then panic sets in. So what I want is, I want these things to be detected during the first 10 minutes of the interview and so that you get a, you give a good round and do better. So let's get started. We have ourselves a parking lot with multiple floors. Also on each floor, parking spots are there arranged in rows and columns. And as of now, only two types of vehicles can be parked, either two wheeler vehicles or four wheeler vehicles. So what we will do is, first of all, we are going to gather all the requirements. Then we are going to break our problem statement in multiple different classes. We'll go through each of these classes and finally we, we will have our running Python code. You will take that Python code and copy it into this editor, uh, CodeGem editor and run tests on it so that we can verify that our code was indeed correct and it has passed all the test cases. Now, since uh, you are using Python, so you will be at an advantage than if you are using something like Java because Python takes, takes less number of lines of code to implement the same thing as Java. So in a low level design, I will recommend using something a language like Python uh, if you know it uh, and rather than using Java. But if you don't know Python and then and you know something like Java only, then use Java only. So let's start with the requirement gathering part. Let's start with the requirements. The first one is obviously park your vehicle. So when a customer comes, then you have to assign them a parking spot for their vehicle based on the vehicle type, whether it is a two wheeler vehicle or a four wheeler vehicle. They will give you their vehicle number, which is the license plate number. And here assume that a ticket ID is already generated for you. You do not have to generate it. So I will tell you why I am writing down the exact method names here also. It's for clarity basically. The second core feature or the method which we uh, parking need a lot needs to have this functionality is unpark or remove the vehicle. Once someone has parked, they can come and give you their spot ID or vehicle number or ticket ID. They will give you their spot ID. If they have the ticket, they can give you. If they lost their ticket, then they can give you only their vehicle number. And then you have to search in your system and remove their vehicle, unpark their vehicle. After that, there is also generally when you go into the parking lots, you will see that on each floor, there is a display board, which keeps displaying the number of free spots for each vehicle type on that floor. So we have to give that functionality also. Again, if someone has lost their ticket or someone wants to see the past data where their vehicle was parked, then we need to implement the search vehicle functionality where either given a vehicle number or a ticket ID, you have to tell at which spot this vehicle is either currently parked or was parked. Okay, so you have to give past information also. Now there are other features in a parking lot. There are payments, there are analytics, there is user management, authentication, there is logging and tons of other features. But like I said in the beginning, parking lot is a large system. It can take 10 or 20 engineers to build and it can take months for them to build this whole system. And in a 45 to 60 minute interview, interviewer is not expecting you to list down all the hundreds of classes. So 
a better approach will be to just focus on the core features deep dive into them and discuss them with interviewer if the interviewer interviewer wants they will explicitly tell you okay i want this other feature as well now let's come to why i have been writing the exact method signatures as well writing down the method signature for requirements gives you two benefits first of all it clarifies your thought process so now you know exactly what you have to design earlier it was just a vague thing like uh, park your vehicle now it is exact so the first thing is your mind becomes clear and second thing most important thing you want to avoid scary situations of like uh, having basically you are thinking of implementing something and interviewer is thinking something slightly different for example you have designed everything uh, and you are now 40 minutes into the interview and let's suppose you are discussing the park method finally and your interviewer says oh uh, so basically what you are doing is you are implementing your own strategy for parking your vehicle but what actually i wanted you to do is it to have your method support multiple parking strategies and now you have put down all the classes all the data structures everything and you have a requirements mismatch with the interviewer had it happened in the first 10 minutes of the interview like you have listed down the method signature then the interviewer would have told you within the first 10 minutes of the interview okay i want uh, basically you to support multiple parking strategies and this things happens a, to a lots of candidates and you want to and this is quite a scary situation because it can ruin your ruin your interview performance and you want to avoid it as much as possible so i'm not asking you to write down this whole solution class or some tester class like this uh, you may not have that much time but at least try to write down the method names and basically all the variables that you will give you do not have to write str just write vehicle type vehicle number comma with ticket id something like that and that will be basically good for you the first thing in a lld interview that you should do is uh, basically list down all the entity classes because they are the easiest to guess so basically you should list down all the entity classes and their respective managers and parking lot is a rather basically you can say simple system it is sort of the hello world of low level design questions so if we have a parking spot objects in 2d array inside each parking floor and there will be a list of parking floors inside the parking lot and for the search functionality to index and rather later search the uh, your basically parking details we have the search manager class now basically not just in this question in any low level design question we will find that there are basically two type of classes one will be the classes where crud operations is going on and second will be the view or search classes for example in this case our parking spot and parking floor class there basically crud operations will be going on you park the vehicle and park the vehicle and what happens is you basically change the status of the parking spot whether it is parked it is parked or not vehicle is parked there or not so crud operation is going on and second will be the view classes which will depend most of the time the view classes or the search classes will be done after the crud operations and or they will directly depend on the crud operations for example here we index a vehicle inside the search manager after it is parked right uh, so what we should do is uh, let's take the example of food delivery system they are the order manager class which actually stores creates and stores the order order and rates those order that should be that is where crud is going on so basically we are creating orders and updating orders basically adding ratings and those rating updates are affecting the view classes which are basically your classes which list your top restaurants based on rating pricing or popularity so the order that is followed is first of all you should dis always discuss the crud classes and then you should go for discussing the view classes or the search classes because the view classes or the search classes depend on the crud classes and if you discuss the view classes first then you will get confused and i have seen candidates getting confused here so always discuss the crud classes first they are most of the times they will be simpler and they come first in the hierarchy so they so you should discuss them first for clarity here we have the parking spot class 
which has got three parameters spot id vehicle type and whether the vehicle is parked or not spot id is your floor hyphen row hyphen column vehicle type is either two or four our class parking floor will keep the bulk of our logic so its constructor what it will have is it will have two basically instance variables the first one will be a two dimensional array parking spots which will keep all the parking spot class objects in rows and columns and second will be free spots count so we need a functionality what we need is we need to keep track of number of free spots for each vehicle type for each floor so each floor will also have a basically a map of free spots counts for each vehicle type so here this map will have two entries because we have two vehicle types then also in the constructor what it does is it will get a two dimensional array from which it will initialize its own parking spot spots so it will basically extract the vehicle type and also check whether that spot is active or not and then it will put a parking spot object uh, in the place of uh, in the in that location that is at that row and column and also it will if that is a valid uh, parking spot or active parking spot it will increment the free spots count for that vehicle type by one so this is how the parking floor class initializes is initialized from our tester class or class solution which will be sort of our parking lot class again the main functionality is a parking floor floor will support is the park method so it does nothing it simply finds out the first available parking spot for that vehicle type and returns this spot id a spot id i already told you its floor hyphen row hyphen column so you know exactly where the vehicle is parked and if it doesn't get a spot id then it returns a empty string then you have parked the vehicle and after parking uh, then you have parked the vehicle and then there is another method get free spots count so we are already tracking the number of free spots inside a map so what we do is we simply return that value from the map for that vehicle type or zero also one more type uh, one more one more thing when you park a vehicle then you decrement the free spots count for that vehicle type so that your count is updated correctly finally you will have the remove vehicle method so it will take a row and a column and it will check if the vehicle is parked at that spot if it is parked then it will basically remove that vehicle and then it will update the free spots count increment then by one for that vehicle type and return success else it will return 404 which is a failure so this is what parking floor class looks like uh, this class will be used by our tester which is the class solution it uh, class solution will keep a list of parking floors we'll see and it will simply call the methods of this class parking floor next we also had the search functionality that user may want to search their vehicle so for that we have the search manager class so it stores the basically your parking details which is the vehicle number and ticket id where that vehicle was parked both these details inside a simple map or dictionary you can say and this index will be called from class solution we will see after the vehicle is parked and again when someone wants to search a vehicle by either vehicle number or ticket id then it tries to search from the dictionary and if it doesn't get anything then it simply returns an empty string so this is a simple class now that we have seen all the classes class parking floor parking spot and our search manager class then let's see how everything is connected by the our solution class which is sort of our parking lot class or you can say it's also a tester class so what class solution has is it has a basically list of vehicle types and it has the list of parking floor objects for you remember that our parking lot has multiple floors so each floor is depicted by a parking floor object and then it also has the search manager class now uh, what it does is it initializes all the parking floors it sends them the basically this parking is a three dimensional list and it sends the internal two dimensional list of to to initialize each parking floor the first important method is park so what it does is it goes through each parking floor and tries to park and if it gets a spot id which is non blank that is vehicle was success successfully parked so what it does is it indexes the vehicle using the search manager's index function 
it sends the spot id that it got from the uh, parking floor and the vehicle number and the ticket id and finally returns the spot id if it is not able to find a suitable spot in any of the parking floors it returns an empty or blank string then we have the remove vehicle method so what it does is it simply searches for the spot id of the vehicle if the spot id is empty then it searches for the spot id of the vehicle if it is able to find one then uh, if it all i uh, already had a spot id or if it is able to find one then it's what it does is it simply calls the uh, respective floor of parking floor object it extracts the location that is the floor row and column from that spot id and then calls the parking floor object for that floor and calls the remove vehicle on that and returns the status if it is not able to find one then the status will be simply false finally what it does it it implements the get free spots count by simply calling the parking floor object for that given floor and it is done and for search vehicle also it calls the corresponding search vehicle method from the search manager class using the vehicle number and ticket id so it just binds or glues down all the classes that we already saw and calls their methods to implement its functionalities so this was all the code uh, which consisted of low level design of a parking lot it's a fairly simple solution uh, because it is sort of an easy question now that we have completed all of our code let's test it so control a control c open the website and this is question number 1 for java this question will be tested in a multi threaded environment but we want to test it in python so let's open python and paste our code there here we have all the our code that was written let's hit the run button to run sample tests and scroll it down a bit so this will run fairly quickly and after the sample test have executed we will run all the tests so right now it's scrolling and it will keep updating so two tests were there and both have passed so let's submit them to run all the test cases so as the code uh, more and more test cases run you will see that the number of test cases will keep be, will keep changing here that's how you know that the progress is being made now all the test cases have passed and it took around like 20 25 seconds so since all the test cases have passed so we know can say for confidence that we are pretty confident that our code was correct and basically you need this sort of confidence in your interview that you are able to do this question now then you will be do this question discuss this question in interview chat well so this was all about the solution and design of the parking lot system this was all about the low level design of a parking lot a fairly simple question a fairly famous question now if you have got low level design scheduled interview scheduled or if you are preparing for low level design interviews then definitely give a look at our uh, preparation roadmap on codegem codegem.com/roadmap so it's basically a 7 day plan to prepare for your low level design interviews it has everything basically it's specifically geared towards the LLD interviews and it has everything it answers all your questions short videos are there which will answer all your common questions and what you need to read for the interview and there is a tons of inter content on the internet and you will get confused if you keep searching everywhere else and it has a day to day basically a daily videos short videos and daily practice questions uh, the questions that you need to practice before and then the less priority questions will come later most common design patterns everything so give it a try it will help you prepare for your low level design interview interview very efficiently i wish you the best of luck for your preparation uh thanks for watching this video bye